Hi guys, so let's let's do a preview here. Get ready for the big labour market report, the non-farm payrolls data, the unemployment rate data, wage growth data. This is all coming in 45 minutes. It's the labour market report for the month of August, of course. And I've got a chart here just to begin with looking at non-farm payrolls over the last few months. Well, actually over the last 12 months. And the thing to point out here is just look at the last six months, all consistently above 200,000. Six months in a row, okay? That hasn't happened for years and years. Um, over 10 years, I think it is, since we last had six in a row above 200,000. Now, we're going for a, for a seventh here, the forecast for the number of jobs created across the US economy in both private and public sectors. The forecast is 230,000. So this would just basically be in line with the consistency that we've seen over the last six months. I would say with this figure, I mean, looking at some of the banks out there, so 230 is the headline forecast. The range, so the most pessimistic analyst out there said 190 and the most optimistic said 310. So the range is, is definitely skewed to the upside. Um, some of the big banks, well, the most bullish out there, out of the US lot, Morgan Stanley think 250,000, Goldman's think 240. Uh, on the European side, they're more bearish, so Deutsche and Barclays both thinking 200. Okay, I actually think that for once, the non-farm payrolls number might not be actually that significant compared to some of the other numbers we get in this report. I think that if you look at the evidence, looking at labor market data from other, from, from other data sets we've had already, um, so ADP yesterday, looking at the private sector only, 204,000 jobs created, just a touch under the expectation. But look, as long as this number starts with a two, it's fine. Um, if we look at some of the, like the ISM non-manufacturing data yesterday, the employment component, for the non-manufacturing sectors for the month of August was the highest since February 2006. If you look at things like initial jobless claims through the month of August, they've been very, very good. Um, a couple of readings below 300,000. Uh, strong jobless claims numbers. Okay, So looking at some of the other information flow we get about the labor market, generally it's been pretty decent. And so I don't think we're going to get any surprises here uh, I'd say there's a bigger chance of an upside surprise than a downside. I, I can't see this number being below 200,000. Anything around, you know, anything between 200 and 250, I know that's quite a big range, but I think any, anywhere within that range is fine. It's not going to change the most important thing of all, and that's what the Fed are thinking. You know, if it's in that range, 200 to 250, I don't think it changes the Fed's outlook with regards to the timing of when they raise rates. Now, if this number's hugely positive, let's say it gets up to 300,000, well then that's different. Um, you know, that does indicate a continued, much stronger than expected, recovery in the labour market. The Fed pointed towards this in Yellen's conference at Jackson Hole. Um, they have been surprised at how strongly the labour market has recovered. And they said that if the strong labor market recovery continues, then they may well have to raise rates sooner. That's what that's what Yellen said. So we need to pay attention to that. Really strong payrolls numbers here today, and you may well get the rate hike trade coming in, which actually, ironically, would probably mean the S&P goes down. Yeah, you'll get an initial spike higher as the algorithmic trading systems get involved, but don't get caught out by that. A number that's too high here may well lead to the S&P moving lower. We'll have a look at the S&P chart in a minute. Now, I think it's going to be around about in line. I think between 200 and 250, and I think actually markets will really take that in their stride and, and, and not really adjust too far. So let's talk about a couple of the other data releases that we've got at the same time. So firstly, unemployment. So the unemployment rate last month actually went up to 6.2%, but you know, it's all kind of in line with, you know, we still got this general downtrend in place. Today, we're expecting it to drop to 6.1. I would say that this number could trump the payrolls figure. 
if, for example, it dropped below 6%. So let's say we got 5.9%. Well, then that's significant. You know, that's another new low since pre-crisis. And again, you're going to start to get people getting more concerned about the Fed having to raise rates sooner than we currently think. And, and remember, market consensus is currently quarter two 2015. Okay? So the unemployment rate, if it's 6, 6.1, 6.2, it's basically ignore it. It's not really going to change anything. If it's below six, I think that's significant. Then we need to look at wage growth because basically what the Fed have said is, yes, payrolls numbers really strong, over 200,000, six months in a row. But they've said that the quality of jobs being created isn't good. There's a lot of low income jobs being created. Secondly, there's a lot of people working part time when they would like to work full time. So there's a lot of slack in the labor market. Yes, these headline figures look very positive, but actually the quality and the level of income that these new jobs are giving isn't strong or high enough to actually feed through to meaningful increase in consumption, which would then drive up inflation. One of the key things from today's report isn't the non-farm payrolls, isn't the unemployment rate. It's actually something called average hourly earnings. So this figure will get both from annualized basis and on a month-on-month -month basis. I've got a, got a chart for you here which is looking at average hourly wages. And you can see that, yeah, decent spike, quarter one, but it's really declined. And, you know, this is what's led to the Fed to say, look, that this is evidence there's slack in the labor market. This is evidence we're not going to get core inflation rising. This is evidence and justification for us to hold off on raising rates. Now, if wage growth comes in higher than expected today, this could trump the whole lot. That could be the single most important number out of all of these. And, you know, that could trump the payrolls number as well in terms of how markets might react to it. OK, so let's talk about market reaction. I'm going to bring in the S&P here and firstly, well, I, I'm just going to look at, sorry, let me move a couple of lines here. The, the, the S&P has been quite weak this morning. Um, European markets are flat. If you look at the DAX, for example, it's exactly flat on the day. Uh, the S&P is down again. Um, I showed you the daily chart earlier, a real loss of momentum here at 2000. We hit 2000 on the 25th of August. Here we are, 5th of September, and we're, we still can't get through it. And actually, today we're trading down on the bottom side of this range. 1985, 75 is important. This is the price point, the July high. Okay, key support there. If that does break today, you could see actually a, an extension lower. Let's go back to the shorter time frame. Let's look at the one hour chart. So, listen, I, I think this is perhaps the hardest market to trade off this data because you've got the double argument. Let's say the non-farm payrolls number is 300,000, way better than expected. Well, yes, this is really positive economically, and you might say, well, that means equities are going to go up. But don't be fooled by that naive view. What will be the dominant force? Yes, you, you'll get a, an initial blip higher on the S&P. That will be the algorithmic trading system spiking it higher. But a number of 300,000, I'd actually expect to see the S&P sell off. And that's because it would seriously ramp up interest rate hiking fears that people would start thinking, well, the Fed's going to have to really bring forward their rate hike, maybe to the very beginning of 2015. And in which case, you know, that's less than four months away. So you're probably going to see the S&P therefore sell off. I think the perfect scenario for the S&P is, is if we get a payrolls number between 200 and 250, Let's say two. Let's say two forty is probably about perfect. Goldman Sachs think two forty. If that's the case, well then it's a nice solid number, but it's not too strong. So we don't have to worry about wage growth. Oh, sorry, we don't have to worry about rate hikes. If also wage wage growth remains benign, again, ironically, that may see the S and P lift higher as it responds positively to a good payrolls number without the the kind of handbrake which is the rate hike fear. Okay, so I think 
Equities will probably be quite tricky to trade. I'm going to bring in the euro dollar to, to talk about how dollar behavior might be. Now, this is difficult because this this cliff you can see on this chart is yesterday's sell-off, the biggest sell-off in this market since July 2011 as Draghi cut rates and delivered asset-backed security policy. Now, the problem here is we've, we've had such a massive move yesterday, which of course, yes, is euro weakness, but also by definition, therefore, is dollar strength. Can the dollar strengthen more, given that this market had its biggest move in three years? Can it really strengthen more of good data, of strong data today? Uh, well, the answer to that is probably yes, but it's going to have to be a 300,000 number, I would say, to get us down to 129 and below. Um, we're going to have to have a serious uh, bringing forward of rate hike expectations to, to make allow this market to have another leg down after yesterday's monstrous sell-off. The 130 handle today is very important. It's obviously psychologically important. It's a pivot level. It's the fib level from yesterday's sell-off. 130 is very, very important and will probably be defended by the bears. But I think this market moved so far yesterday, you can't really expect it to have another big move today. If we just check in on the daily chart, then you know this is a huge move. And I showed you earlier, but let's have a look at the weekly chart again. Yeah, the 130 is really important. We can definitely get down to 129 off this data, sure. But another big extension today after yesterday's session, perhaps there's just a bit of exhaustion. Everybody's already short this market, aren't they? So to a certain degree, bullish payrolls is priced in. Of course, if we get a really weak payrolls number, if it's below 200,000, well, actually, then there's actually a pretty decent chance we'll get some upside, some dollar weakness. But again, the 130 handles strong and the euro is very, very weak. So I'd say I wouldn't expect this market to go outside of the range 129 to 130. OK, we'll see. Um, I think that if we get strong data, it's pretty straightforward for markets like currencies, like bonds. Strong data, the dollar strengthens, uh, things like the US 10 year, the Treasury sell off, okay, as people plan for the rate hike to come sooner than we had previously thought. If it's weak data, well, then the opposite, the dollar will weaken, particularly against things like sterling, for example, and the yen. Uh, they, that, they've had big moves against those markets this week. Um, so, uh, and weak data and T notes will rally, okay. SP is a lot harder, I think. The S and P is definitely harder. So let's see. We've got 30 minutes to go. The other thing to look out for, of course, is the fact that we've got the meeting in Minsk with Poroshenko and Putin and the rebels and the EU leaders. And so any talk of a ceasefire or not could come in and actually be a bigger influence on markets this afternoon. So let's see how we go, guys. Forecast 230,000. Unemployment were expected at 6.1. And wage growth is expected to remain flat. Good luck.